Good morning. You're listening to FloridaLA.net, and I'm Kemp Parr. This morning, my guest is Bruce Wicker, an industry consultant and former CEO with J.J. Haynes and Virginia Tile. Bruce, how you doing? I'm doing great, Kemp. How are you? I'm good. I know you've been over in Europe recently, just got back. What were some of your observations from being over there? Both of my observations are from uh, the perspective of what's going on in England. You know, the recession's coming there first, and it will be bad, particularly, I think, in England. Right now, if you walk the streets of London or the shops, everything looks pretty busy. At the same time, there's more food banks in the UK than there are McDonald's. So it's already started at the low income levels and it's going to get worse. But I haven't seen it fall off a cliff. So what I saw was there may be six months ahead, four months ahead, I don't know, something like that. Less traffic, their projects are smaller. And they're going towards a lower price point type of product. So all the typical things that we see, plus more discounting. So price is softening, you know, at the retail level. Also, it appears there's no problem with availability. So I think what they are seeing, we will see to what degree is unclear, but uh, they're ahead of us. Well, we did get some numbers recently about inflation over there. It's it's at 10%, which is higher than what we're seeing over here. I, as you know, were, was over in Italy not too long ago for the July right. show. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the strength of the dollar is making the retail shops from the tourist areas very strong as people are taking advantage of what they can buy with mm-hmm. the dollar. You know, they're concerned about particularly pricing and energy and uh, how that's going to affect, especially in the tile market, their cost of goods. That's a big concern over there. Just to, to mention, I'm, I'm currently executive vice chair of a group called uh, International Design Group. So we own Canco's Tile and a company called CR Resources, which is heavily into the stone slab side, as well as a number of other products. And in any event, I was watching what was going on over in Europe, Rose and Tile. I'm talking with Donato and Joe Lundgren and so on. You know, I don't think it's a disaster over there. And I think the energy issue is, is very real. But what I can say is I don't think we need to be panicked over here about supply from there. So I, I think it's bad. But I don't think it's a nightmare. I think we'll yeah. be okay. We still need to import 65% of our consumption numbers in tile with domestic production at full out. And interestingly enough, there's eight plants now in Tennessee. With all that domestic production at full out, we still need to be buying more tile. Let's shift over to planning. Most people are in planning mm-hmm. mode now for 23 and they're mm-hmm. wondering what is the market going to bring. We do know that residential replacement is taking a dip and builder is slowing down, and multifamily is still fairly strong. What's your call for what 23 might bring us? We're already seeing a decline in units. We saw it starting several months ago, so it's going to get worse. It's the price increases on a year-over-year basis that are propping up revenue, and that's the only thing that is. I think we're going to see units fall. Is is it 10%? That's maybe a, a reasonable number, but the revenue line would also be affected by what happens with price. I don't think we're going to be able to maintain the pricing levels that we have now when we have a shift in supply and demand largely caused by the drop in the units on the demand side, right? Meanwhile, there is more supply. So we're going to go back to normal. So once we're back to normal, there'll be more competition. And sooner or later, manufacturers, in order to keep running the plants, they're going to have to start discounting. And the consumer is looking for a deal. So the retailers will start to get more traffic by running promotions. So we're going to see some price. So you put the two together, I mean, it could be 15%. We really don't know. What we also don't know is when does it start? We will all probably say in the first half of the year, particularly during a slow period, maybe the first quarter. But how long does it last and, and how bad is it going to get? So, you know, I agree with Jeff Hamer. You know, you mentioned in, in your article about, you know, Jeff's comments concur. I think it's not going to be as, as bad as what we saw back in 2008 or anything near that. But it's going to be, feel bad, particularly after what we've come off of. But the other issue for me, if I'm a distributor, is I've got inventory to high value. And if I'm trying to bring in a little bit more inventory, because maybe I'm still concerned about supply, which I think is totally unnecessary at this stage, you know, I think people should be worried about making sure they don't have too much inventory and yeah. selling the inventory they have while they can at the price that they've got. Because there's going to be a margin squeeze, which we talked about temp, you know, a year ago that this is going to come. So here we are. So this inventory buildup at a high value, uh, declining demand, softening of prices as we move back into normal competition is the big issue. But nobody really knows. 
what's going to happen. But let's say 15% on a revenue basis is possible at, let's call it the worst point next year, whenever that next worst point happens. How long it lasts, hard to say. But there will be a recovery. You look at the dynamics of what we see in the U.S., the demographics of the housing market, you know, the, the new homes are down, interest rates are, are you know, making it impossible for people to buy homes. This is going to reverse. It's hard to say exactly when. Let's call it 2024 for the sake of argument. When it reverses, we're not going to see a surge like we did post-COVID, but we're going to see a pretty strong recovery. In the meantime, this thing about the multifamily, it's going pretty strong right now, but I did see in the ABI report that they saw a slowing of activity relative to multifamily. So I think everything slows, basically, uh, at what pace and how deep uh, is left to, uh, to be seen. But there's going to be a recovery, and we're going to get through this. You know, you and I both are going to be at the NAFCD meeting in less than two weeks, November 1st, and we're going to hear from ITR Economics. And the last time I heard them talk was just a, I don't know, six weeks or so ago. And they were talking about this 23 dip just being a few quarters, three quarters potentially. Mm-hmm. So uh, yeah. hopefully that's yeah. the case. We, we need to watch the employment numbers. They're still driving a, a lot of the um, strength of the market right now. Hopefully that we won't see unemployment go down too far. Let's shift. You mentioned a minute ago, Jeff Hamer, just to catch my readers up, you're talking about an article we just mm-hmm. wrote in the October issue around the state of distribution. Interesting that we just heard the news yesterday about Belknap Haynes buying STC, which is the formerly you know, known as Swift Train. And uh, you know, they mm-hmm. pick up that Earthworks brand along with that. So they're not only mm-hmm. picking up a broader distribution area by picking up Texas and expanding their whole reach, but they're also picking up a strong brand. That's interesting news, isn't it? Yeah. The Mancini family has multiple businesses. This is like a family office. So they right. invest in a lot of different businesses. The distribution side is something they're obviously keen to invest more in. So yes, they get the geography and now they're in the Southwest. I believe the Earthworks, the private label part of it, which is now a national play, is the uh, jewel in the crown and probably maybe one of the more important reasons, if not the most important reason for that acquisition that makes all the sense in the world. You know, Shane Calloway over there and Swift Trade, SGC, I guess, and we call it now. A great company, so I, I think it's a, it's a terrific deal for for both companies. The Victoria acquisition of IWT, which is a tile distributor down in Florida, it's almost a diversification play for them because they bought Balta, so they own Bentley Mills, and they own Cali Floors. Now they're buying up Florida tile distribution, so they're definitely becoming a bigger player. Just to throw the numbers at you, they paid $28.5 million for that, and the annual turnover for that distributor in Florida is $63.2 million. So that's a diversification play, wouldn't you say? Yes and no. So Victoria PLC is now about $1.4 billion U.S., maybe $1.3-ish uh, British pounds. It's a publicly held company. Their heritage is in the soft side. But when you look at them now, they have diversified into the hard surface side. They made the acquisition of a tile business, I think it's called Granacy, in Turkey. So now they have a tile manufacturing piece of their business. Uh, They will be distributing that tile through IWT, so no doubt. I think they are diversifying into hard surface. You know, they have an office in New York, so they've got a good guy over here who, uh, you know, has been looking for the right deal. And obviously, but IWT, they, they found one. I mean, it's a good company. They're in stone, tile, LVT. And it does sit alongside a Cali, which is also on the hard surface side. So, yes, right. I think we can expect to see more from Victoria. But I, I think the tile is a sign that that's a distribution area that they're interested in. All right. I guess I'll see you in less than two weeks at, in Chicago at the NAFC. Yep, we'll see you there in Chicago. It's colder than heck here in Baltimore. I can't wait to see what's going to be like in Chicago in two weeks. <laughs> well, I mean, hopefully it'll warm up. This is just supposed to be a little cold snap. All right, Bruce, great to catch up with you. Thanks for spending time with our listeners. Again, been talking to Bruce Wicker, an industry consultant, and you've been listening to Kempar and FloridaLA.net.